this month's design has several different stitches in it. Uh, most of them are pretty simple and we've gone over them before, but there's a couple that are different. So I'm going to just go over one more time the stem stitch, which is the most basic stitch, and that's what all the solid lines are. Of course, if you feel more comfortable doing a back stitch, then do a back stitch. I'm going to start at the end, never in the middle of a line, but I always start at the end. Go an eighth of an inch, back sixteenth, and then an eighth, and come up in that same hole. And I always carry my thread on the, the same side. So one thing I wanted to show you, when there's little tiny curves, like the end of this inside of his ear, and also if you look up at his thumb, what I like to do is I like to make that using a fly stitch. Kind of a fly stitch variation, I guess I should say. So I'm gonna come pretty close to the end, maybe just a tiny little stitch more. Sorry about that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn my fabric and it, it's gonna be kind of like a fly stitch. So I'm going to carry my thread up and around the same shape as that little um, nugget there at the top of his ear, come down at this end, up at the center of the curve, and then tack it on the other side of that thread. So I like to use little ideas like this when it comes to areas where there isn't really a good way to do it. Um, that seems to make a lot of sense. I use that for little areas like that, his thumb, and also that's how I'm going to do his little nose. So that's just one little thing I wanted to show you. Back to the stem stitch, I'm going to go over again how to go around a corner. I've shown this in previous videos, but in case you haven't seen them. So if you want to go around a corner and you want a nice sharp turn and you're using the stem stitch, what I like to do is take my needle down right in the corner, come up an eighth of an inch around the corner, Go back in that same corner hole and come up halfway in between. So a sixteenth of an inch. Now I'm going to turn my fabric and I can just start stem stitching the new direction. And I have a nice corner. Now this little guy, this little bunny's sweater is filled in with running stitches. And a running stitch is basically just up, down, up, down. Pretty easy. So I'll show you. I'll start here. And you know, even though I have these little stitches on the pattern, you don't have to trace each one like I did here. You can just go ahead and fill it in on your own if you'd like, or you can just draw a solid line if you're using like a pilot friction pen that will disappear with the heat of an iron so that when you're done, you can just iron it and those drawn lines will go away. So that's really easy to do these. So this big bloom here is covered with a whole bunch of little daisies using a lazy daisy stitch with a French knot in the center. So a couple of things I wanted to tell you, since all of these stitches are going to start in the center, we don't want a big old knot there because it'll be really hard to pull your thread up through. So what I would suggest if you have to start at the flower instead of like working your way up and then starting the flower, I would go ahead and instead of making a knot, I would just thread my thread through some of the existing stitches so that I don't have a knot that I have to stitch through. And then for these, we're just gonna start in the center. 
you're gonna loop your thread around just the same shape as the little petal, go in the same hole. That's why you don't want a knot there. Come up at the tip of the petal, the thread under the needle, put the needle down on the other side of the loop. We're gonna come back up in the center and there's one petal. So we can just work our way all the way around. Now, I did hear from somebody that the Lazy Daisy isn't their favorite stitch. So I thought, well, let me see if I can come up with something else that you could stitch there as an alternative. So if you wanna try something other than little Lazy Daisy stitches, I thought these were kind of fun. These, this is called a pistol stitch, and it's basically like a, a French knot at the end of a stitch. So you start in the center. Now you're going to wrap your thread around. I'm going to do it three times. It's up to you how many times you do it. If the more wraps, the bigger the, the little knot. And instead of bringing the needle down where we began, like you would with a French knot, we're going to bring the needle down at the tip of the petal and pull the wraps down to the fabric. And I'm, I'm pinching this on the back side and on the front to hold that in place. And I didn't pull it tight enough that I couldn't pull the needle through, but it is pretty snug on there. And then I pull it through. And so you have this, this fun little stitch with a little knot on the end. So start in the middle. I'm going to wrap it three times. I'm going to put the needle down at the tip of the petal. Pull those wraps down to the fabric. Pinch it in place and pull the thread through. And it's just as easy as that. So that's another option in case you don't want to do the Lazy Daisies. Now with the Lazy Daisy ones and with these, I would still go ahead and put a French knot in the middle. So for a French knot, we're gonna wrap it. I'll go ahead and do that three times. This is that 12 weight um, Valdani thread. So it is gonna be kind of a big knot, but that's fine. I like kind of chunky. And you put your, you're gonna hold the wrap with your finger on the needle. Put the needle down just a few threads away from where you brought the needle up. Pull the loops down to the fabric, pinch it in place, and then pull the needle through. And then you have a French knot right in the center. So that's just another option. For these big leaves, I did a blanket stitch variation I don't know what the variation is called. I looked up and tried to find a name for it. Um, I don't think I invented it, <laughs> but I couldn't find a name. So it's just a variation. So I'll show you down here of this one. We're gonna start at the base where the leaf meets the stem. And what we're gonna do is work up one side of the leaf at a time. So we start at the base, we're gonna go up. On the pattern, I drew all the little lines. You don't need to do that. You just really need this center line. You can draw the lines if you want. But So I did mine about an eighth of an inch apart. And then I'm going to angle it up to the side of the leaf. Now usually on a blanket stitch, my thread is gonna go under my needle like that. For this one, I'm gonna wrap it around one more time. So it's kind of a blanket stitch with a knot at the, the loopy end. Now all I have to do is go up another eighth of an inch and I'm gonna keep that same angle as I work up my leaf and wrap that around. That little knot just kind of helps hold that in place because sometimes if you're taking that big of a blanket stitch, it can kind of fall in a little bit. So it's very helpful to have that. I could even make these just a little bit closer together if I want my leaf to be more dense. Okay, so for the last one, I'm gonna take it up to the very point. I'm going in that same hole that I just had from the previous stitch. I'm gonna wrap that twice. And then I'm just gonna 
tack it in place right on the other side of that knot. Okay, so we have half of it done. Now, instead of coming back down this other side, I'm going to tie off my thread and then work my way up from the base to the other side. If you don't want to do this um, fancy of a stitch, you can always just do a stem stitch around the outside and maybe a little fly stitch down the middle or a fern stitch or just that single little line of a stem stitch up the middle. It's totally up to you. So here's the same design, only stitched up with some Cosmo Seasons floss, which is this really pretty variegated floss. There's pinks and kind of a, a wheat and a really pale green. And so by using certain parts of my thread, and I do waste some that way, but that's okay. What I did is I stitched, used the pinks for the flowers, and then I added in a few other colored flowers, but mostly pinks. And I also used the pinks around his little sweater and in the stitches, but you can see where the variegation started to change in the back, which is fine. I like that look. And then I used the kind of taupey, um, wheat colored ones to do a lot of the stems along with the green. I also used a green in this color to do the leaves because I didn't really want the leaves to switch to pink. I wanted them to stay green. So that's what I did on the leaves. And then on the little bunny's body, I used a solid Cosmo thread too. And those colors are given in the email that I sent out with the One Stitch at a Time monthly newsletter. Something else I wanted to point out is when I design something, I'll draw it up. And so in this case, I drew it and I printed it out on my freezer paper to trace because that's a very helpful way to trace. And so by ironing that pattern to the back of my fabric, it reverses the image. So now my bunny's going to the right. Then what I do, this is kind of the step-by-step -step when I'm drawing a pattern. Um, since the my first initial drawing didn't look like this, because I didn't know quite where I wanted to put certain stitches. So now that I have it the way I want it, I scan this in and then I trace each of these stitches because I know that's those are the ones that I want in the pattern. Then what I did is I printed it out again using freezer paper, but I didn't reverse it. And by doing that, it automatically reverses the design. And now the bunny's going the other direction. But as you can see, when it's a pattern that doesn't have text in it or anything directional, it really doesn't matter which way it's going. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to point out on this colored one, in case you do want to try something like this, I used this kind of a wheat color in the French knots in the center of the flowers to kind of tie that color up and make them a little bit more uniform. So that was the other little thing I wanted to point out. Um, this one's been pressed. You can kind of see the difference. And when you press, what I like to do, here, I'll show you these, these two leaves. So you can kind of see the difference between a nice pressed piece and one that's just been stitched. But when I press, I like to press it upside down so that the, the um, padding on my ironing surface kind of absorbs the threads so that it isn't pressed into the fabric. They have, they're allowed to um, keep their shape and it's just pressing the fabric basically. So there you go. And I hope you have fun stitching up this little April bunny and share your finished projects with me. I'd love to see them. You can post them on Instagram and tag it One Stitch Club or hashtag One Stitch Club or tag me, Kathy Schmidt Stitches. And uh, we also have our Facebook group. So feel free to post there too. The Facebook group, if you haven't joined, it's called One Stitch Club. And I'll love to see your work. Thank you.